New Year Bonanza for consumers, non-subsidized cooking gas, the LPG price cut by 42.50 rupees per cylinder, relief for airlines as jet fuel ATF prices also cut by a steep 12.5%. Peace shattered again in Jammu and Kashmir as Pakistan troops fire at 13 posts along border in Samba sector throughout the night. BSF DG briefs Home Minister Rajnath Singh about the situation along the international border in the state. Planning Commission renamed as Niti Aayog, Prime Minister Narendra Modi had pushed for an effective structure to strengthen cooperative federalism and Team India. Suspense continues over government formation in the state of Jammu and Kashmir. BJP leaders meet Governor N.N. Vora to discuss government formation. PDP Chief Mehbooba Mufti met Governor yesterday and claimed support of 55 MLAs. Home Ministry takes concrete steps for women's security. Home Minister Rajna Singh asked states for 33% representation of women in police force. Launches integrated women safety app Himmat. And search resumes for more bodies for air Asia, from Air Asia wreckage. Ten bodies recovered. Bodies reach Surabaya city in Indonesia. Well, in a good news for consumers, the price of a non-subsidized cooking gas has been cut by 43 rupees for a cylinder about uh, this uh, this cut comes up uh, because of the fall in the crude oil prices this is the sixth straight cut in the price of non-subsidized lpg a household is permitted up to 12 subsidized cooking gas cylinders a year beyond which it has to be brought at the market rates after today's price reduction a 14.2 kilogram non-subsidized lpg cylinder will cost around 708.5 rupees in Delhi. On similar lines, the price of aviation turbine fuel or ATF or jet fuel has been cut by a steep 12.5%. This is also the straight six monthly reduction in the rates. This reduction follows a 4.1% cut in prices on 1st December 2014. Well, uh, some political news. In the state of Jammu and Kashmir, a BJP delegation met Governor N.N. Bora today to discuss its party's plan over government formation in the state. BJP has expressed hope that a formal dialogue between BJP and PDP will be initiated within two days after positive signals from PDP over the issue, adding that the party will be part of the next government in the state following the public mandate in its favour and any arrangement that excludes it will be seen as negating it. State BJP President Jugal Kishore Sharma has said that BJP is talking to other parties for government formation in the state. Jammu Kashmir me Jammu Kashmir ki janta ne Bharatiya Janta Party ko yo mat diya hai wo सरकार बनाने के लिए दिया है और सथाई सरकार बने छह साल के लिए सरकार बने विकास के लिए सरकार बने इसके लिए भारतीय जनता पार्टी कार्यरत है प्रयासरत है उसके लिए बातचीत जो है वो प्रारंभ हुई है well, he added that BJP was trying to bring a stable government in the state. जो भी गठबंधन बने, सथाई गठबंधन बने, इसके लिए भारतीय जनता पार्टी जल्दबाजी में कोई भी कदम जो है वो नहीं उठाना चाहती। जम्मू कश्मीर के लोगों की बेहतरी के लिए अगर सरकार बनानी है तो उसमें थोड़ा समय जरूर लग सकता है। तो हमने उनसे जे भी बात कही है कि इसमें थोड़ा और समय चाहिए ताकि जो बातचीत चल रही है वो किसी नतीजे पर पहुंचे well, some economic news the planning commission has been renamed as niti aayog the decision to rename the plan panel was taken at monday's cabinet meeting the new body will replace the five decade old planning commission and will be headed by a vice chairman not deputy chairman as was the case in the commission 
Well, in a bid to provide better security to women in Delhi, Home Minister Rajnath Singh on Thursday launched a mobile phone-based application, Himmat. The minister also distributed pepper sprays at the launch of the application. In another major step, Home Minister Rajnath Singh has asked states for 33% representation of women in police force. कानून और व्यवस्था की जिम्मेदारी मैं मानता हूं कि पुलिस की होती है गृह मंत्रालय की होती है और मैं समझता हूं कि समाज तभी सिक्योर हो सकता है जबकि समाज में रहने वाले गरीब कमजोर और साथ ही महिलाएं जब अपने को सुरक्षित महसूस करें तब यह विश्वास के साथ कहा जा सकता है कि यह समाज पूरी तरह से सुरक्षित है सारे देश के बारे में मैं यह कहना चाहूंगा कि हमारे मंत्रालय से एक एडवाइजरी सभी राज्यों को जारी की गई है कि पुलिस में भी महिलाओं का कम से कम तैतीस फीसदी का प्रतिनिधित्व होना चाहिए Well, the app allows users to call the police control room and also trigger a 30-second audio and video recording at the press of phone's power button. It will enable police personnel to reach the spot at the earliest. Well, ahead of the launch, uh, Delhi Police Commissioner B.S. Masi said Himmat is uh, the first integrated women's safety app in the country. This will be very strong for a woman to be able to use this cell phone, smartphone based application, which will be able to download on her cell phone. If she has ever had an emergency, when she has the police of the police, अगर वो इस फोन को शेक करेगी या जो बटन है जो उसको दबाएगी या जो स्विच ऑफ स्विच ऑन बटन होता है उसको दो तीन बार प्रेस करेगी या पांच छह बार प्रेस करेगी तो सीधी जो है उसका लिंक पुलिस कंट्रोल रूम से हो जाएगा और वहां पर पुलिस कंट्रोल रूम से उसकी लोकेशन भी आएगी लोकेशन पता चलेगा तो उसके द्वारा जो है पुलिस की पी वैन को वहाँ पर भिजवाया जा सकेगा Well, Union Minister for State uh, for Development of Northeast Region, Dr. Jitendra Singh, today released an e-book which highlights and depicts the achievement and further initiatives of the Ministry for the Development of the Northeastern Region. Addressing media persons in New Delhi, the Minister said that the rich heritage of Northeastern Region, if promoted properly, will take the people of the region closer to the rest of the country. This rich cultural heritage of Northeast if it could be depicted to the rest of the nation, it would not only help in the development process by attracting people from all streams to this part, but it will also bring a closer psychological and cultural affinity between people living in this part of the country and the rest of the country, and rather help bringing this region into the closer to the mainstream India. Well, Pakistan Rangers continued ceasefire violation in Samba sector of Jammu early this morning. They targeted around 13 BSF border outposts on the international border. BSF sources said that the Pakistani Rangers started unprovoked small arms firing from 1 a.m. to 6 a.m. morning. Whole night intermittent a small arms firing was going on between BSF and the Pakistan Rangers. However, till now no loss of life has been reported. Meanwhile, Home Minister Rajna Singh has asked the border security force to give an appropriate reply to any unprovoked firing by Pakistan at the international border in Samba sector. Replying to a question on ceasefire violation by the Pakistani side, Union Home Minister Rajna Singh expressed hope that Pakistan will mend ways one day. हमारी बीओपी के ऊपर भी फायर गिराया और टारगेट किया हमारी बीओपीस को और मजबूरन हमको रिटेलिएट करना पड़ा और एक्सचेंज ऑफ फायर जो है वो लगभग चार बजे तक जारी रहा उसके बाद पाकिस्तान ने रिक्वेस्ट की कि क्योंकि उनके रेंजर्स की भी कैजुअलिटीज होगी तो हमने ऑनर किया और उनको अलाउ किया वो अपनी डेड बॉडी उठा लें उन्होंने प्रॉमिस भी किया था कि फायर बंद कर देंगे लेकिन हमारा दे मतलब उन्होंने बड़ा सरप्राइज किया उन्होंने कि रात को साढ़े बारह बजे फिर अनप्रवोक फायरिंग और वो भी मोटर्स के साथ में हमारी बीओपीस के ऊपर फायर तोड़ दिया रात को जो कि सुबह तक छह बजे तक चला फायर 
Well, earlier on Wednesday, the retaliatory firing at Sama post by BSF stopped after Pakistani rangers waved white flags to collect the dead bodies of their soldiers. This happened after Pakistan forces resorted to heavy firing on the Indian forward post in Samba sector, which left one BSF personnel martyred and another injured. Pakistan को ऐसा करना नहीं चाहिए। वैसे बराबर पाकिस्तान से बातचीत यहाँ के परस्पर दोनों देशों के डिप्लोमेट्स का करते रहते हैं। और लेकिन मैं समझता हूँ कि आज नहीं तो कल रास्ते पर तो आएगा ही। well, there are many welfare programs being run by the government of India for needy people of the society, but people are not able to get benefits out of these programs due to lack of awareness. And one such program is free legal aid being provided by the Legal Services Authority. More in this report. Well, uh, uh, it seems to be a problem there, but uh, moving on, Indonesian rescuers. Uh, promised an all-out efforts to search for bodies from Air Asia flight QZ8501 as the weather cleared today and international investigators joined attempts to locate the fuselage of the ill-fated plane. Seven bodies have been so far retrieved from the Airbus carrying 162 people which crashed Sunday in the sea near Borneo Island en route from on the, uh, Indonesia's city Surabaya to Singapore. Rough weather yesterday had hampered efforts to locate and retrieve more bodies, but conditions had since improved. Well, Mumbai attack conspirator Zaki Ur Rahman Lakhvi has challenged his detention on charges of kidnapping in a Pakistani court. Lakhvi's counsel has filed an application in court against implicating him in a false and fabricated FIR. Just before Lakhvi was to be released yesterday, he was arrested on charges of kidnapping a man named Mohammed Anwar Khan, an Afghan national six years ago following the arrest. The police got Lakhvi's remand for two days and he's being held at a secure location. Well, moving on, people across the country welcome 2015 with great excitement. Gathering and celebrations were seen at marketplaces, restaurants, malls and the new year was celebrated amid tight security. Well, there you have it on your screens, uh, the scenes of celebration and DD News uh, uh, wishes uh, all of you a happy new year 2015. Well, moving on, President Pranam Mukherjee greeted the nation on the eve of the new year. In his message, President said then that uh, I extend warm greetings and best wishes to all fellow citizens for a happy and prosperous new year. Let 2015 be a year of peace, progress and harmony. Let us abhor violence and maintain maximum vigilance against all efforts from within or without to disturb peace and security. Let us celebrate pluralism and promote tolerance and understanding amongst all communities. Let the new year be dedicated to the creation of an inclusive society where goodwill and brotherhood prevails amongst our people. Let us work with heart and soul and without distraction to take our nation to new heights of achievement. And the Vice President also greeted the nation on the occasion and he said that warm greetings and best wishes to all the citizens on the advent of the new year 2015. May the new year be the harbinger of happiness, good health and prosperity for all. Well, Prime Minister Narendra Modi also greeted the nation a happy new year. The Prime Minister in his tweet said, and I quote, wishing you and your family a wonderful 2015. May this year bring immense happiness, peace and prosperity in everyone's life. Well, from New Zealand to Britain to North Korea, millions around the world celebrated when the clock ticked past midnight, ringing in 2015 with massive fireworks displays, concerts and light shows. Dazzling displays of fireworks lit up Sydney Harbour on Thursday as Australia's biggest city welcomed New Year in a spectacular style.
from Dubai to New Zealand and from Britain to North Korea. Millions around the world celebrated as the clock ticked past midnight, ringing in 2015 with fireworks display, concerts and light shows. By the time 2015 arrived in the country, some parts of the world were already well into the new year, with New Zealand, Australia and Japan among the first to celebrate. Due to its geographical position close to the international dateline, New Zealand was one of the first countries in the world to welcome the new year. Fireworks lit up the Auckland skyline at midnight as 800 kg of fireworks were let off as part of the city's New Year celebrations. Australia rang in the New Year with its awesome annual fireworks display. Sydney greeted 1st of January with a tropical style fireworks display featuring shimmering gold and silver palm tree pyrotechnic effects. Fireworks exploded over the Opera House and the Harbour Bridge during New Year's Eve celebrations in Sydney in Australia. North Korea let the world look into its secretive state in an extravagant New Year's Eve fireworks display. Fireworks dazzled Pyongyang's skies as the public looked on its amazement. China has got a big reputation when it comes to fireworks. So the Beijing display at the stroke of midnight was one not to miss. Revelers packed into prize vantage points across major Chinese cities to bag the best location to welcome in 2015. In Hong Kong, hundreds of thousands of people crowded the city's promenades to watch the 8-minute pyrotechnic display. Tokyo put its own stamp on New Year 2015 celebrations with a balloon release. While fireworks are a staple of New Year's Eve display, the Japanese capital added something a little different to its night sky at midnight. In Russia, New Year's Eve is bigger than Christmas. Russians enjoyed fireworks in Moscow's Red Square to welcome in 2015. Dubai sought another record-breaking celebration of the New Year with the largest LED illuminated facade at the world's tallest building, that is Burj Khalifa. Lasers flashed through the skies of downtown accompanied by music and dancing fountains at the foot of the tower to delight of a large crowd. Bureau Report, DD News. So New Year's celebration there. Well, moving on, the concept of governance has undergone a sea change in recent times. Indian citizens are now more curious, wanting to stay in thick of things where governance is concerned. 2014 has seen politicians, bureaucrats and some government agencies making their presence felt on the social media. Here's the report. The states are responsible for educating citizens about new changes and policies. Earlier, this aspect of information sharing was taken care by print or press media. However, growing popularity of social media inspired government and its department to adopt it. This is certainly a big positive step and let's take a look at some of the ambitious digital initiatives taken by the government of India. Digital India is an initiative of government of India to integrate the government departments and the people to ensure effective governance. It also aims at ensuring the government service made available to citizens electronically by reducing paperwork. The vision of Digital India aimed to transform the country into a digitally empowered society and knowledge economy. The program will be implemented in phases from the current year till 2018. It would also bring in public accountability through mandated delivery of government services electronically, a unique ID and e praman based on authentic and standard-based interoperable and integrated government applications and databases. The government launched Dot Bharat domain name in August 2014. With the launch, individuals of companies who are interested in owning a website with domain name in Hindi language would be able to book the name in Hindi script. The name would have Dot Bharat in Hindi script as its extension instead of commonly top level domains such as .com, .net or .in. Launched in 8 major Indian languages, since the name Dot Bharat, CCTLD is shared by other Indian languages such as Boro, Dogri, Konkani, Maithili, Marathi, Nepali and Sindhi Devnagri. Prime Minister launched the My GOV portal designed as a medium for people to connect with the government and to contribute to the governance by giving their opinions on key projects. The government will seek the people's feedback and suggestions to expand the nature and scope of MyGOV in future. The PM said MyGOV is a technology-driven medium that will provide people a chance to contribute to good governance. The portal will bridge the gap between people and government. The portal will allow citizens to participate in multiple theme-based discussions and share their ideas with a wide range of people. The portal has been divided into several groups like Clean Ganga, Girl Child Education, Clean India, Skilled India, 
digital India and job creation. As the concept of governance has changed, youth are now more curious and active on social media. This has made governments become responsive towards the issues of general public importance on this platform. The prospect of social media as a governance tool was recognized by Government of India and social media sites of different ministries was started rapidly after Narendra Modi became the Prime Minister of India. Consequently, many union ministers also joined the social media sites. PM himself used social media platforms quite successfully for providing information of his policies and his day-to-day -day activity through Facebook and Twitter. His activities on social media channels are not limited to Facebook and Twitter. He has gone even an inch more than the politicians. India is a flagship program of the government of India and one of the flagship programs, uh, uh, the other program being the Make in India program and of course the Jan Dhan campaign. Moving on, uh, Indian batsman Rohit Sharma became the highest uh, runner scorer in uh, the ODIs getting to 64 of 173 balls against uh, Sri Lanka in November. N. Srinivasan found himself mired in controversy when the Supreme Court removed him as a BCCI chief. Indian boxer Sarita Devi refused to accept the bronze medal at the Incheon Asian Games and for this International Boxing Association banned Sarita Devi for a year. Here follows more newsmakers from the world of sports in 2014. Saina Nehwal 2014 proved to be a mixed year for the Indian ace badminton player Saina Nehwal. She won the Indian Open Grand Prix tournament after beating her compatriot PV Sindhu in the summit clash. She however crashed out of the All England Super Series Premier in the last state. She meanwhile had a record to her name after she became the first Indian woman to have won China Open Super Series for the very first time. K. Shrikan. If Saina won the women's title, then K. Shrikan, India's rising star, won the men's title and scripted history. P. V. Sindhu. The passing year brought laurels for Sindhu. She created history by becoming the first Indian to win two back-to-back -back medals in the World Badminton Championships. She also successfully defended her Macau Open. Well, time for the recap of the main headlines.